Hey everyone, in this episode, I'm gonna be talking about my awesome 2014 Toyota RAV4 that was originally mine, but my wife started driving when I bought my Tesla Model X. But since I've been having so many problems, <laughs> I'll leave it there. Uh, my wife and I have been sharing the Toyota RAV4 for the last three weeks, and it's really <laughs> rekindled my affection for the car. I've always loved this car. It's been amazing and just super reliable. And before I get too far into this, I do have an older video that I posted. It's <laughs> super boring. I didn't edit anything with it. It was just me standing, looking at the car, talking about it. But it is a full and open review of the RAV4 and my earlier experiences with it. But now this is six and a half years later. This is the longest I've ever owned a car which is crazy to me because I've always been a car guy. So I kind of buy, sell, trade cars and I get into something new uh, or old, <laughs> but something that I really am passionate about that I like. And I kept this car all this time because there was nothing better. There is not a better SUV out there right now. The Model X, of course, is awesome. All the bells and whistles that you can have in that car, it's just phenomenal, but as I am well aware at this point, it is not perfect because all of those bells and whistles cost something. It, they cost something financially and there is a patience cost that goes along with that. So even though it's newer, it doesn't necessarily mean it's better because the six and a half year old car has been more reliable than my four, five month old Tesla. But let's talk about it. We'll get into it and I'll show you the car. So as for the exterior, it does have some dings and dents, unfortunately, as you would expect with a, a car of this age, this vintage. It does have a couple door dings, even though I usually park pretty far out so nobody can get to me, but unfortunately there are a few. I also had an accident over here on the quarter panel, which you'll see, in which an RV decided to make a left turn from a right-hand lane. So I've had this for quite a while, but thankfully it really, Hasn't gotten any worse. The rusting has just stopped there. Nothing really has happened. And they just missed my window. So I never fixed all that. Um, and I have one door ding over here. And then I have this slight door ding right there. It really drives her crazy because I try to take care of my cars, but whatever, it's gonna happen. But overall, the exterior has held up great. I do have an extra set of wheels on it. These are aftermarket wheels that I just keep the snow tires on. It has been great in the winter. It's only front wheel drive and it does have Tesla drivetrain. So it is very powerful and it will slip when you hit the accelerator a bit, but as long as you can control your right foot, it does amazing in the winter. There was one year where my all season tires were a bit worn and it didn't do quite as well in the winter, but having snow tires on it is the way to go. So here we are under the hood of my car. It is quite dirty because I live in upstate New York and we get a lot of salt and sand and junk on the roads. But I wanted to show you under here my JDMO. So I unbolted the cover here so I could take that off. And I wanted to show you what it looks like under here with the unit and everything. So this is the JDMO fast charging option that Tony Williams from Quick Charge Power developed. Uh, I think it's really awesome that they did the work on it. I'm glad it's an option. I was actually one of the early adopters and supporters for this project, and I got this pretty early on. Tony Williams himself actually came out here to my driveway to install it. So I was pretty thankful. Previously, I've always said a lot of positive things about the company and the product and everything. But honestly, as time went on, I'm really not a fan. I can't really recommend you spend $3,000 on this option. It's been nice to have but it rarely works and it's not the car it's not the parts it's partly the jdmo unit but also partly with chatmo it's a flawed system and a lot of the charging stations just don't work they're not nearly as reliable as the tesla supercharger network obviously that's just the best it hands down the supercharger network is the way to go if you're looking for an electric car. I would not spend the money on this because most of the charging stations I encountered, well, maybe 50% just didn't work. And it left me stranded numerous times. I have videos that I've posted about that. Both trips when I went out to see Rich Rebuilds, 
I got stranded because this stupid thing wouldn't work. In the early days, it was only $2,000. So that's a little more reasonable. I think that's fine. But $3,000 for something that barely works and will probably get you stranded is a total waste of money. If you're buying a car that has it, cool. I just wouldn't spend a ton more money on it. Okay, I opened some of the doors so I can show you what it's like on the inside. Granted, my wife doesn't keep quite as good a care of cars as I do. I would clean this thing all the time. My car was always very clean, but we also have a two-year-old and this is usually kind of the family hauler. Um, if we have to take a longer road trip, we would take the X, but for a lot of trips around town and stuff, we just jump in this thing and go. So it's always pretty dirty. So be warned, you're gonna see some dirt here, <laughs> but I'll take you inside and show you some stuff. The inside is held up surprisingly well after six and a half years of pretty good use. So there are some stains on the seats, but anytime those get there, and I do have a detail, they actually get sucked right out. Like it actually gets clean really nice. The dash and everything is held up really nice. The display still works. I have had very, very few, almost zero issues with this car in the last six and a half years that I've owned it. And I also will say that the room and space is excellent. If any of you guys have seen one of the typical RAV4s of this era, this body style, you kind of know them. Interior is pretty much the same as any other one that you've seen. It's just that this is an electric version. So as you can see right there, uh, we have the car seat facing forward. We were just able to turn that forward facing because our son just turned two years old and he's big enough now that he can be forward facing. But previously we did have it facing rear and it still works out really great. The front seat can't go all the way back, but my wife is small. And when she would sit in the passenger seat, because I usually drove, it really wasn't a big deal. But honestly, most of the time she would sit back here with him and she was always very comfortable. These seats are great. They slide forward and back. It actually does recline forward and back as well. So nothing really bad to say about these at all. The driver's side seat isn't quite as good. I've tolerated it, but I've had pretty bad sciatica in the past. And I think part of it was from the seat, honestly. It really is very basic. It doesn't do a very good job supporting you at all. And something back here, yeah, I mean, there's something hard, like a part of the seat right there that would always bother me. And I kind of, like my tailbone would hurt after driving this car for a while. It's a very flat seat. There's really no support or bucket part of it at all. So I have to say, I think the worst part about this car has been the driver's seat. I've thought about trying to upgrade it to something else, maybe a limited seat, which would bolt right in. It's just that I would lose the seat heaters because the seat heaters in this car are specific to the EV. So if I did upgrade that seat or do anything, then yeah, I'd lose that feature, which is really nice. But then I'll spin around to the back and show you back here. And all of this cargo area is awesome. Like I have fit so much stuff in here over the years. I've moved landscaping blocks. You can fit the backer board, the stuff that you use when you're doing tile jobs like bathrooms and stuff like that. And that's really awesome. I fit dishwashers in here, uh, lots of stuff. One thing that's really nice, and again, someday I do wanna do a comparison video with this RAV4 compared to my Model X, but I have to say that the shape of this and the way this is more squared off really does give you a lot more space in the rear. The Model X comes down more at a slant, so you can't stack things very high back here. For example, I just sold a set of winter tires and wheels, and I just folded these seats down, put them down right in here, and they all fit in here great. I had plenty of room to spare. But with the Model X, because of the slanted roof, it was actually a lot tougher. So at some point I do want to get like luggage or boxes and, and just cram it in here and then move the same stuff over to the Model X so I can show. But I think for now, you'll just have to trust me that this space seems a lot more usable. The Model X is longer. So I think it's a little deeper in the Model X, but because of the height, this is definitely more usable. So now we'll talk about reliability. If you go on any forum online, you'll hear a lot of people complaining about this car and how it breaks down a lot and they've had issues. Toyota and Tesla didn't want to build the car. Their support is kind of bad, but I have had great 
luck with my car. Even my parts car that's actually right over there, that was 100% working and functional at 125,000 miles. The range had dropped. So the range for that car was down to about 90 miles. When my car was new, I got 144 miles was the record. At this point, in good weather, good conditions, probably 100 miles, something like that. The degradation is a little worse than a normal Tesla because while it does still have the liquid heating and cooling system, it's not on all the time. It's only on when the car is charging or when the car is in the ready position. The RAV4 is very good, still better than most, but not quite as perfect as the Teslas. So that's why there is a little degradation. In the six and a half years I owned it, I've only been to Toyota twice. So the first time was a motor, which as you know, in all the Gen 1 Tesla parts, there were some bugs and issues. With this car and with all of the early Model S's, you could develop a motor whine. And it's just a high pitched whine. It doesn't really affect anything, doesn't even really seem to affect efficiency. It just gets a little annoying as it gets louder. But I had started developing that around 26,000 miles, something like that. I had it replaced once and it's never come back. I've heard from other people that it had come back for them, but personally, I think it has a lot to do with how you drive, because when I first got this thing, I was so excited about the torque and the power that it had. I was doing burnouts, I was showing off, I thought it was awesome, and I think that kind of hurt the motor, and that's probably what made it fail. And since replacing that motor, I had that thought so i just never did it again on very rare occasions i might do a one but i pretty much have never done another burnout which is actually hard because when you pull away from a stoplight it's front wheel drive with the tesla powertrain it does have some power like it can squeak the tires especially when you go over the painted lines on a road at an intersection it will squeak so you have to be careful but yeah so i just am aware of that and if you don't beat on it i think it'll last a very long time the only other issue that I had that required a trip to Toyota was that I had a coolant pump fail. And that one unfortunately shut the car down. With the motor, I kept driving it. They didn't care. They didn't require me to leave it there with them. Uh, the whole process was actually fairly quick. I think that process was like a month. But unfortunately with the battery coolant pump, they would not let me drive it. They did give me a loaner, but that was totally up to the local dealer that I used. Not everybody would really give you a loaner. So I did have a loaner, but it was like a month and a half that they had my car. They just didn't want me to drive it just in case any damage occurred to the battery, uh, which obviously would be a lot more expensive than replacing a coolant pump. But other than tires, wiper blades, this has been a phenomenal car. I have had to do almost nothing to it at all. So I highly recommend them. Don't get worried about all the posts that you read online if you start researching this car. Yes, there are some that have issues. However, I should mention another car that I had that was my wife's RAV4 that was same exact color. That was a 2012. Uh, we did have one nagging issue with that one that I didn't read anywhere online. It ended up being a thermal computer that was in the right rear quarter panel of the car. We had issues with that car charging anytime it was cold. And also at the same time, it would drain the 12 volt battery down. So when I got home in the winter, which we have unfortunately very long winters here in New York, I would have to plug in the car to the J1772 plug. And then I'd also have to put a battery tender on the 12 volt battery so it didn't die overnight. So that was hugely annoying because if I happened to forget one or the other, then the 12 volt battery would die just overnight. So that was really annoying. The Toyota dealer had a very hard time figuring that part out. And the only way that was actually even solved was because I had my parts car over here and I was bringing them parts, trying to figure out what part it could be. We tried a gateway computer, that wasn't the problem. And then somehow it came up that it's this thermal management computer. I put the computer myself into her car and it wouldn't take. It actually gave me some codes. So it's one of those parts that had to be programmed to the car, which is so annoying. And I really hate that Tesla does that. It makes it so we can't even work on our own cars. But yeah, so I had to take the part and the car back into them. And we had to wait for a technician from New Jersey to come up here and fix it. So that was really annoying. That went on for probably a year 
where I was just always plugging in both ends of the car. And uh, I'm really happy that got fixed. And I sold that car now. The new owner loves it. We're midway through a winter and he has no issue. So I know it was the thermal controller in that car. I still would say that it, overall, it's a very reliable car. Those are my only issues with two of the, I think, six that I've had. Well, I think that's about it. I think I covered pretty much everything with my car. If you guys have any questions about the RAV4 or anything else comes up that you want to know, post a comment down below and I'll answer it. But I highly recommend them. It's been very reliable. Uh, I wish my Model X was half as reliable. But anyways, uh, if you want to see the full review that I did, I think, maybe two years ago, something like that. On the RAV4, I have a lot more details about the car and more specifics about the car. Uh, I'll post a link below and then maybe do a card up here somewhere. So you can click on that and watch that review as well. But I guess that's about it. Stay positive guys, and I'll see you in the next one.